Pacomius is primarily known for his contributions to Cenobitic monasticism, Cenobitic monasticism being monks living in community together, as opposed to Hermetic monasticism, where monks live in solitude. Several ancient biographies of Pacomius survive, the Boharic being the most complete. He was born 292 to pagan parents in Shni, just south of Thebes. Pacomius, at the age of 20, was conscripted into the Roman army. During his service, while in Thebes, he and others received food from Christians, and this ignited his fascination with Christianity. After being discharged from the military, he felt God calling him to settle down at a deserted village called Shenaset. Scorched by the intensity of the heat, in which there were not many but a few inhabitants, he settled down there, growing some vegetables and some palm trees in order to feed himself or some poor man of the village, or again some stranger who should happen to pass by. Soon after, he was baptized. During an outbreak of the plague, he would go to a nearby forest to gather firewood for the sick. However, as his reputation grew, he found himself inconvenienced by his constant visitors. In 316, Pacomius would reconsider his station, giving his home to another who would continue care for the poor. While Pacomius moved deeper into the wilderness to learn the monastic life from an anchorite named Palamon. According to Palamon, the rule of the monastic life according to what we have learned from those who went before us, is as follows. We always spend half the night, and often even from evening to morning, in vigils and the recitation of the words of God, also doing manual work with threads, hairs, or palm fibers, lest we be overcome by sleep. We do this work for our bodily subsistence also, and whatever is above and beyond our needs we give to the poor, following the words of the apostle, only let us remember the poor. Consuming oil, drinking wine, eating cooked meats are something quite unknown among us. We always fast until evening, eating daily during the summer, while in the winter every other or every third day. As for the rule of the Synaxis, it is 60 prayers during the day and 50 during the night, not counting the sporadic prayers we make so as not to be defaulters, since we are commanded to pray without ceasing. And it is also written, if any one of you is in trouble, let him pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ likewise commands his disciples, pray, so as not to enter into temptation. Prayer is indeed the mother of all virtues. From Palamon, Pacomius learned a strict asceticism and the solitary life. However, around the death of Palamon, Pacomius would hear a voice from heaven say, Pacomius, Pacomius, struggle. Dwell in this place and build a monastery for many will come to you to become monks with you, and they will profit their souls. Pacomius obeyed and established a monastery governed by a common set of rules. Slowly this community grew as monks joined him, both male and female. This led him to establish a separate community for the women. While these gains were initially modest, as Pacomius's fame increased, he attracted larger groups and even entire monastic communities joined, eventually numbering in the hundreds. He was even said to have been visited by Bishop Athanasius of Alexandria, but upon fearing being ordained, Pacomius fled into the wilderness. Athanasius, understanding, passed along a message to him, So you hid from us, fleeing from that which leads to jealousy, discord, and envy, and you chose for yourself that which is better, and which will always abide in Christ. Our Lord, therefore, will accede to your wish, that never, never may you have a rank. Nevertheless, if by God's will we come back to you, may we deserve to see your honorable piety. Pacomius served as abbot for approximately 30 years until his death in 346. He got sick during another outbreak and died on May 9th. So what was Pacomius's legacy? Well, I think William Harmless described it well when saying, Textbooks typically speak of him as the founder of Cenobitic monasticism from Cenobium community and contrast him with Anthony, the founder of Anchoritic monasticism. The contrast makes a nice diptych. Too nice, actually. For the historical record is more complex and more ambiguous. Pacomius may not have invented the monastery as such, but he was certainly a pioneer. He was also an organizational genius. By the time of his death, he headed a confederation of nine monasteries for men and two for women. These housed hundreds, perhaps thousands of monks. His achievement earned him an international reputation, and the rules he composed provided a model for later monastic legislators, notably 
Basil of Caesarea in the east, and Benedict of Nursia in the Latin west. This has been Ross von Hausen at Saints and Stuff. If you like what we do, feel free to like and subscribe.